This is the first video of Unit 2, which is about gases. In this particular video, I will list the postulates for the KMT, kinetic molecular theory, and discuss briefly ideal versus real gases. In this cover page, I show a press clipping from Sports Illustrated, and they actually use what's called the ideal gas law. We will get to this in a couple of videos. And they use this gas law to vindicate Tom Brady and the Patriots. But as a scientist and a Falcons fan, I'm still very skeptical. Still, it's very strange to see Tom Brady's name and the ideal gas law in the same web address. The kinetic molecular theory, we will start from there, and it describes uh, four postulates that uh, ideal gases follow. And I lied. We're not going to start there. We're going to start with gases and how they differ from liquids and solids. A lot of this is going to be intuitive, but I think we'll learn maybe a couple new terms. Uh, first of all, the abbreviation obviously for liquid and solids, we'll put it in parentheses L and S. This would be G. Uh, number one, uh, gas flows and assumes the shape and volume of the container. Liquid does flow. And it does assume the shape of the container, but its volume is fixed. Okay, if I have, I, I see my glass of water next to me. If I spill that glass of water in the form of a very thin film on my desk, the volume that was in my glass and the volume that's on my table all spread out is identical. Okay. Uh, not for gas. For gases the volume can change and we'll see later how that affects density. Uh, number two, gases are compressible because there are large distances between molecules. That is not this that that is not so for liquids and solids. Number three. Oh, and yes, liquids and solids are not compressible relative to gases, but let's we'll just say they're not compressible. Number three, ah, gases density. A gases density is relatively small. Uh, compared to liquids and gases, liquids and solids. Okay. Um, and I'll write this in pink, and a gas uh, density is very variable. It changes pretty easily because since volumes are variable, the densities are variable also for gases. We know that uh, a density, the units are going to be grams per milliliter for solids, but for gases, it's typically going to be grams per liter. That is typically the units. And again, the volume can change pretty readily because it fills the shape of the container, the volume of the container, but also gases can be compressible. Number four, when you mix two gases, two or more gases,
those gases are totally immiscible, completely immiscible, in any proportion. Okay, that's four ways gases differ from liquids and solids. Now, let us talk about the kinetic molecular theory. the KMT. KMT. And the, this was developed actually by many, many scientists, but the two names most associated with the KMT are going to, bo going to be Boltzmann and uh, Maxwell. And we'll see these two names in a later video as well. And a lot of this work was done in the 1870s. What does the kinetic molecular theory do? It explains how molecular behavior of gases is reflected in macroscopic properties. Is reflected. Isn't that what chemistry is all about, though? By understanding what's happening at the atomic level, we can start predicting and explaining behaviors that we could observe let me finish the sentence, is reflected in macroscopic, and you know we'll call that observable. Either with simple instrumentation or with our senses, macroscopic properties. And again, that's what the heart of chemistry is, understanding things at the atomic level to make connections to the um, macroscopic level. Now there are four postulates for the KMT. Number one, number one, uh, gases are particles. And separated by large distances. And each individual molecule's volume is negligible. Negligible. Volume of each molecule insignificant. Think of it as zero. Negligible. We know that's not true. What I'm trying to describe is conditions in which a real gas gets closer and closer to being an ideal gas. And when it's close, very close to an ideal gas, we can properly use a bunch of the gas laws we'll be looking at in this unit. Number two, they move in what's called a constant straight path. random look and yes they will be bouncing off each other and colliding into the walls of the container when that happens the collisions are and I'll put this in maybe green perfectly it's called elastic And what that means is the energy is transferred but not lost. Lost as what? Lost as either heat or maybe even light.
Okay. Next, number three. There are no attractive or repulsive forces. Again, we know that this is not true, but the closer a gas gets to uh, the behavior of no attractive or repulsive forces, the better its behavior can be described by the gas laws. No attractive or repulsive forces. And number four, the last one, is we're gonna we're gonna continue talking about it in the next video, and that is the average uh, kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is proportional to the temperature. Um, so the symbol for kinetic energy could be E with a subscript K, but I like to use, uh, let's just use KE. Um, I put this in green. KE, and I'll put here average. And the sign for proportional is the fish. And Kinetic energy does change as temperature changes. The higher the temperature, the higher the average kinetic energy. Okay. I'm going to try to fit this all into one page. All right. There are two bullet points. Now, let me get a new page. There are two bullet points that I want to give you. First one is, oops, first one is, and I've said it before, the closer a gas follows the KMT, the closer it is to what's called an ideal gas. This shadow. Uh, the closer it can be considered an ideal gas, or we can say closer it becomes ideal gas. Number bullet point number two. Gases become non-ideal. Or, um, yeah, I'll, I'll put that. Gases become non ideal when temperatures and pressures do what? So, at blank, we'll start with temperature and blank pressures. High or low? Can you predict what goes in the blanks? Gases become non-ideal under blank temperature or blank pressures. So if your temperatures are very cold, right, you'll start to condense the gas. So we're just listing off conditions where gases tend to condense. Okay. Obviously, a liquid would not follow any ideal gas loss, and then. What about the pressure? If we compress the gas, they get non-ideal because now they get very close together and we're not keeping them uh, very far apart, separated by large distances. So high pressures. I should put here low. Same as cold, but high or low. Uh, low temperatures. Okay. All right. I feel like I drew nothing. Uh, let me give you one diagram, and then I have one parting uh, statement. So let's say we have a container. Okay, let's make it a room. And let's put representative gas molecules. Let's say every dot represents a mole of gas. So here we have five moles of gas. And what if we compress it 
and contain all those five moles of gas into a, I don't know, into a test tube. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. The mass stays the same. Five moles has a representative mass in grams. So mass stays the same. But you see that volume went down. And you know that uh, density equals uh, mass divided by volume. So if the denominator gets lower, the term density gets higher, becomes bigger. So as volume goes down, density goes up, keeping the same number of moles of gas or the same number of grams. All right, so that's why density can vary. You can't do this with liquids. Liquids' densities do not vary because their volumes not change if you have the same amount same grams or moles of liquid. Okay, my parting words are this. In postulate 4 of the KMT, we talked about uh, kinetic energy. We know that kinetic energy is the energy due to motion. And we could think of it as speed, the speed of the molecules. The higher the temperature, the higher the kinetic energy. The higher the kinetic energy, the average kinetic energy, uh, the higher the average speed of those molecules. And we are going to talk about speed in the next video. But going into that video, I want us to know that blank gas molecules move faster. Is it going to be light molecules or heavy molecules? Light gas molecules move faster. So light, so that's a low what molecular, or we'll call it molar mass. And in the next video, we're going to put big MM as molar mass in an equation that we will um, uh, derive. Okay, I will see you in the next video. We will talk about speed and molar mass.